Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today, as the title suggests, we're going to be talking more about the cold and snowy spell impacting the UK and Ireland, and especially as we go towards the middle part of next week, we're looking at a boom or bust kind of scenario in terms of snowfall. Either we're going to see a lot of snow, uh, or potentially it's going to be quite a mild, wet outlook. So I'm definitely leaning towards some places in the UK at least, seeing a very significant amount of snowfall during the next week and a bit. But before that, we still have snow risks and cold every day to talk about. And that's what we're going to start off with, or actually start off by looking at the snow risks that have already happened. So of course, uh, we've had the snow showers, and you can see this very clearly on the NASA satellite imagery, this huge blanket of white across parts of Scotland. You can see a uh, very, very good covering there. Unfortunately, to areas just south of the highlands, the moisture has been cut off, so we've more got just isolated patches of snow from the occasional snow shower. Uh, but you can see the depth of snow on some of these snow cameras. This was the same one I showed you yesterday, and you'll probably see some of the images I showed yesterday. And you can see how the snow's just continued through the day, and now, Judging by some of these shadows, I'd say that's at least sort of, if I move this, kind of 10 uh, centimetres on this table here. And you can see they've dug out some of the driveway as well. If I just move this one more time. You can see they've dug out some of the driveway, and that looks to be, like I said, maybe 10 centimetres, even more. And it's going to continue to build up, uh, but I thought I'd just show you that for fun. You can also see we've had patches of snow across parts of Northern Ireland and also parts of Ireland there, especially across high ground. But the snow showers, as you can kind of tell, away from Northern Scotland are quite hard to forecast. And then we had the main the snow event which probably impacted the most people uh, was this snow event through from parts of uh, northwest Wales into parts of the Midlands and then into southern and southeast England this morning. And I got snowfall here in London, it settled. I know some parts of the Midlands, Coventry got a few centimetres, and even into parts of the South Downs and southern England got as much as kind of three, four centimetres of snow. So a fairly significant event that occurred overnight given uh, how little was expected. And I did talk about how models can undo the impact, sorry, not undo, underdo the impact of the showers as they move over the ocean. And that's kind of the process that we saw developing, which you can kind of see here if I play through to about uh, 12 a.m. You can really see how this massive showers developed as it moved over the Irish Sea. It developed somewhat of a low pressure center uh, and became kind of banded along a trough and that allowed it to move slightly further north and maintain its strength as it then pushed into uh, the Midlands by kind of 2 a.m. and then down into parts of London and the southeast England uh, by kind of the early to yeah, basically the early morning pretty much. And then we've seen snow showers, of course, continuing in since then. If we go to uh, basically now, you can see the snow showers impacting Northern Ireland, parts of Ireland, uh, Northwest Wales, uh, parts of the East Coast, but especially across parts of Scotland. Now, those snow showers will, of course, continue, as I'm about to show you on the UKV Metal Fist run. And the reason for the snow showers is still the same. We've got those very cold upper air temperatures, uh, are just kind of a kilometre above the ground. We're looking at temperatures being minus 10 to minus 11 degrees across parts of Scotland. But by tonight, all of the UK and Ireland will be well below the minus 5 line. Uh, places looking at minus 7, minus 8, minus 9. And you can see throughout the duration of Saturday, Sunday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, pretty much the entire run, we look at these very cold temperatures remaining in place. So we're both going to see the snow showers, as I'll show you here uh, in a second, but we're also going to see some pretty low temperatures. So if we look at, take a look at the maximum temperatures uh, for tomorrow, you can see uh, the maximum temperatures are widely going to be single figures or zero or below zero. It will tend to be slightly milder across parts of Southwest Island, but even then, not much. And you can see Sunday will be even colder, uh, actually, yeah, so you can see a lot of places in the east and the north are going to be seeing sub-zero days. A similar picture for Tuesday uh, and kind of, yeah, as you can see there, very low single figures, but potentially the mild air starts coming from the southwest. More on that in a bit. And in terms of the minimum temperatures, potentially you're going to get some very, very cold nights. I mean, what's this modelled here? I had it just a second ago, it was showing up. Okay, it's disappeared. Oh yeah, here we go. You can see across parts of Scotland, uh, you're getting those purple colours. That's minus 14, minus 15 degrees overnight. And even for the south of England, it's going to be kind of widely minus 5 or minus 6. This is showing minus 8 degrees. So you're definitely getting an idea. It will be feeling cold regardless of if you've got snowfall. Um, but those snow showers, as expected, uh, given the cold areas there, they will continue. Uh, tomorrow, they're really going to focus into parts of uh, Northern Ireland and Ireland, Scotland, and also actually into parts of Wales and Southwest England. And I've been talking about the possibility of a Pembrokeshire dangler for a while, 
which is a more focused band of snow showers which runs across West Wales uh, into the southwest England. And that does look likely, likely at least a moderate one to set up uh, during Saturday and then also into Sunday. Uh, and then we are also looking at the potential for snow showers along the east coast uh, during tomorrow as well. You can start to see there and then especially overnight tomorrow uh, into kind of Sunday as well. You can start to see those snow showers uh, along the east coast. So really the same areas we've been talking about for those snow showers, uh, Ireland and Northern Ireland, uh, Northwest Scotland, the east coast and parts of Wales and southwest England or the snow showers. Now uh, as we go towards the fourth and especially the fifth and the sixth the, uh, the flow starts to become a little bit more slack a little bit more slow uh, the winds are slowing down and let's go to the GFS model because the 12 o'clock of the European has not loaded yet and potentially as that flow starts to slow down we could see more of these unstable features starting to develop like we saw yesterday so as I've said many times, they're very hard to model, but you've potentially got one here, potentially got one here, uh, potentially got one across Northern Ireland, and then potentially got another one into parts of Northwest England. So while we can't pinpoint currently where they will be, that's definitely something to look out for in the shorter range, maybe kind of Saturday night into Sunday, and then Sunday into Monday for some last minute snow risks. Uh, and actually the European uh, Dalmatian plots had this uh, feature uh, as well, if I just try it check which hour it was if we go to uh, yeah so this is the chart for uh, midnight on monday and you can see the european model does have a slight feature passing down through parts of ireland uh, northern ireland and then into the southern england and wales on monday so that's something to look out for but like i said the models haven't quite pinpointed that yet properly for us to start talking about it now the interesting changes will start to happen as we go through the weekend and into next week and that is this kind of boom or bust pattern that I was talking about at the beginning of the video, i.e. low pressure comes, it bumps into the cold air, potentially it risks bringing in milder air and wiping away that cold spell. But at the same time, if we can get the balance right, we're going to see that precipitation bumping into the colder air, turning to snowfall and producing very, very heavy snowfall. And in my opinion, that scenario is currently more likely, but the problem is we don't know where uh, in the UK that might occur. Will it occur further north across parts of Scotland? Will it occur more central regions of the UK and Ireland? Or will it even occur across parts of the southwest or multiple different regions at various stages? That is the bigger question. And we can play through some of the model runs to get an idea uh, of what might happen here, the different possible outcomes. So this is the latest GFS model run. Notice how the high pressure starts to sink to the south. That's our ridge. It's very much going to the south. We still have low pressure to the east, so we're in that, that slack northerly flow that we talked about. But we more and more start to shift towards a zonal flow. And you can see there's that low pressure coming in on the uh, left side of the screen there. That's the potential beginnings of this zonal flow. And it's this transition that we're really looking forward uh, to for a potential snow risk. Now, one slightly more solid risk at the minute oh, oh by the way you can see on this one a nice example of one of those potential features that we look out for uh, that's don't take this as literally this is just an example i was trying to give as many examples as possible um but one potential uh, time period we're looking to is the 7th at uh, the 6th and the 7th of january uh, so the gfs actually downtrended what it was showing earlier but we're going to see the first uh, of the kind of northwesterly low pressure systems coming from the northwest uh, on this period uh, like i said the gfs has shifted away it was showing this earlier before but this gives a nice example of what could happen uh, which is the front bumps into the colder air and you get some snowfall but the other models are showing very very different things for that same period so we can show the icon model here this we play through we still have that slack northerly pattern, but the low coming in from the northwest, uh, there's kind of two of them, and they phase together and produce this band of snow which passes through the UK, uh, basically two days earlier than the GFS uh, on the 6th into the 7th. So we have our low to the east, we have this low here, they sort of, I wouldn't quite say merge, but we get large scale synoptic lift uh, in this zone, which leads to precipitation bands developing, and because the air is still cold, that is essentially one big snow band that pushes south all the way through the UK and Ireland, basically the entire country gets a covering, uh, as you can see here, all the way down from Scotland, Northern Ireland, parts of uh, England, and then into Southern England. The only potential problem with this is that the mild air makes incursions into the southwest, so Ireland and southwest England, as I was talking about earlier. Other models had this as well. The uh, European model has been fairly adamant on this. I don't think it's quite loaded in on the 12 o'clock run, so we can take a look at the 6 o'clock run. But you can see at the kind of fifth period, there's our low to the east. Similar thing happening where it merges with the low uh, coming to the west. And then we get another band of heavy snowfall passing down through the UK. But note again, there are still differences in positioning. And if we go back to that Dalmatian plot, here we go for, let's go to somewhere around the 
uh, 6th or the 7th of January. So yeah, this is our this is our potential system, uh, and you can see it's made up of that low to the east of us, which has been hanging around this whole time, and then that low riding the top of this ridge, it comes down from the northwest, and like I said, as those merge, essentially, uh, that's where potentially we're going to see this big northerly snow band. But as usual, the uncertainty is so high. And take a look at all of these dots. If we end up getting one of these solutions where the dot of the western low pressure center is so far southwest, which is completely in the realm of possibility, uh, that's going to be a very different outcome to if you get the low pressure center being somewhere here, the merging process will be completely different. And same goes for this low pressure center. If it's somewhere over here, as opposed to somewhere over here, and there's really a lot of knock-on effects. All of these small unpredictable features will have a knock-on effect. Uh, so essentially, that's why the uncertainty is so large. But the support definitely is increasing. And if you're a snow fan, I would very, very closely watch the period of the 6th and the 7th of January. Uh, one nice example was the UKV here, which brought in this big snow band uh, from the north, uh, initially across parts of Scotland, then northern England, and then there's the two merging, and then that brings us covering snow all the way down to the south. Uh, and this resulted in a chart of like this. So essentially, almost all of the UK covered in at least some form of snowfall, including significant snowfall. This is 10 centimetres across the south, even more 20 centimetres across parts of southern Scotland, northern England, and then of course, uh, the north of Scotland, seeing those huge dumpings from the snow showers, as we've talked about for a while. So this is definitely something to watch, but do not take this chart for granted. Uh, it will almost certainly change when the uh, three o'clock runs, the next three o'clock run comes out of guarantee there'll be a different outcome. Uh, and that, this is just to give an example of the potential scenarios that could, could occur on the sixth and seventh period of January, where we potentially see uh, this, sorry, back to the Twitter, where we potentially see these um, lows coming down from the north. Now, after that, the uncertainty, unfortunately, only increases even further. And this is where we see the biggest boom or bust potential. Because if we go to the uh, the jet stream chart and this is the chart for yeah this should, should do it the seventh you can see this whole time if we go to the jet stream chart for right now uh, you'll see that the jet stream is very much wavy uh, it's bending around and it's not in any way zonal it comes up through parts of canada over parts of greenland and down into parts of europe again it's kind of this wavy omega block pattern uh, with the anti-cyclonic and cyclonic wave breaking events leading to uh, long-lived low pressure to the east of us uh, and long-lived high pressure to the west of us. So we've been in that northerly. But that starts to change as we move towards that period of the 7th, like I said. And that's as you can notice here, the jet stream starts to kind of, I would say, kind of turn on again, reactivate, and we get this more zonal pattern, still some waviness to it, and it's not a super, super strong jet stream, like, for example, uh, in parts of the Pacific, as you can see there. But we get this waviness, uh, sorry, not this waviness, but we get the reactivation, and that brings back the risk of these low pressure centers coming through the Atlantic. And when we get these troughs, uh, here's an example, uh, here's, an, uh, here's another example coming off the East Coast, that's where we potentially see these low pressure centers develop. But the question is, how strong will the high pressure be to the north? Because we still have high pressure to the north, uh, and how north will the jet stream get? Because if we're at the jet stream passes to the south of us, uh, we'll be on the north side, we'll be on the cold side, and that's going to result into some really uh, incredible snow, uh, snowy scenarios. So I'll show you one example here. This is the scenario where we are on the northern side of the jet stream. The high pressure is strong enough to deflect these lows slightly further south, and so we get some ginormous, oh, wrong, wrong run, sorry. Um, just building hype for nothing there. Uh, so we get these ginormous um, snowy scenarios depicted here. Where you get basically huge lows passing to the south of us uh, like this, bumps into cold air and then across southern England. This would be heavy snow and blizzards pretty much. Uh, but if you, uh, We can also take a look at the um, Canadian model. That was another one showing similar things. Like I said, never take these as literal. This is just examples of the kind of scenarios that we're trying to figure out uh, that could occur and which one's most likely. So yeah, this is a Canadian model. That's our sixth uh, snow event, as you can see there, through kind of the eastern part of the country. And then notice we get this huge snowstorm across certain parts of Ireland and then into Wales, central, southern, uh, northern and eastern England like this. Uh, and that's around for the ninth time period, same as it was on the icon as well, actually. And then we get a a snowstorm this time further north into parts of Northern Ireland, Northern England and Scotland uh, and then the run finishes so we don't really know what happens after that. Um, so we're potentially looking at multiple storm systems coming through. Uh, the one caveat is if one gets slightly further north the second one is probably going to go slightly further north as you saw in the Canadian model there. So really the knock-on effects are so large and if we refer back to that Dalmatian plot you're going to see exactly what I mean that the uncertainty is just sky high. Uh, this is one potential model uh, model, uh, sorry, not model, uh, low pressure system here that's going to impact us. Notice how huge the 
spread of uncertainty is and it only gets bigger and by the time we are getting to this is yeah the 9th of january i mean you can barely make out a kind of discernible pattern in low pressure it's just a bunch of dots basically anything could happen but we are trying to we are basically figuring out is it going to be the pattern where we get lows coming to us like this or the converse which i'm about to show you is the gfs where they just wipe away the mild air and the blizzards are really restricted to uh, northern areas especially high ground so yeah this is a gfs scenario notice how much further north of the low is uh, and then we get basically rain very very strong winds across ireland uh, mild air across the south and then the snow is essentially restricted to initially northern england but mainly scotland and higher ground as well um potentially cold air coming in from the back but you can see just same thing happens again and again so this is really the problem uh, we just can't it's very hard to say what's going to happen one two potential things i will say uh, one is we're going to really try and look out for what happens with the low pressure to the east of us because there's starting to be a pattern where uh, if we get low pressure and i can put this uh, actually no, i'll use this is more easy to tell uh, low pressure to the east of us can really influence where the, the rest of the low pressure goes because so this is really annoying the chart keeps on flipping up what i'm trying to show you so if we get a low pressure system which is larger and further south not quite like this this is quite small what's that's going to happen is that's going to allow ridging to extend further south into kind of areas just to the north of us that's going to help encourage those lows to then go further south the jet stream to go further south and we get more snow vents into southern england um, if this low is kind of takes up more of a large area well one more thing actually is uh, the lows um, can also help kind of swing around uh, the, the pressure to uh, around it so this is not a good example on the gfs the gfs is essentially showing the opposite thing with weak forcing through a large area which essentially allows the low pressure systems to come straight into us if we then compare with the icon and then you'll see what i was kind of rambling about just then which is the low pressure systems are slightly uh, kind of in a better position to allow we've got the high pressure here and then that's a slight kind of limit to how far north things can get and also we get this kind of troughing over here which can help sort of swing uh, things swing the swing kind of low pressure systems around them and the jet stream is flatter so that's really what we're trying to figure out but as you can see the uncertainty uh, is really really significant uh, and if we take a look at the high resolution uh, met office ensembles you can see the mix of different outcomes is really really notable we do have quite a few scenarios where we get the low pressure system to the south you can see that one there uh, that one there probably looks like it's going to the uk this one is more of a middle ground uh we've got the, this one here this one here and that looks like it's about most of them we do have a few scenarios which are southern kind of uh, southern england wales ireland heavy snow events then there are the ones which kind of uh, mid central england potentially northern areas like that and then there are some which are kind of no man's lands so like this one this is kind of high pressure in play uh, very very cold and probably snowy but not much in the way of low pressure that's definitely on the lower end of outcomes in my opinion that's probably not going to happen low pressure definitely seems to be coming into play uh, around this period like i said the uncertainty is high and it's just a matter of trying to figure out where and when but this is very very difficult so essentially i can't tell you uh, for fact which one is more likely at this stage or well, what's going to happen i'm just trying to illustrate the scenarios uh, though i will say the gfs um, does have a tendency to really over deepen low pressure systems and if i show you the 500 millibar anomaly and let's go to the gfs and we can play through that loop here you'll see what i mean uh, that the low pressure system which eventually brings kind of wipes away the cold air that's this one right here it really really massively deepens out of pretty much nowhere i mean we've got slight troughing here but the jet stream is just not quite strong enough uh, to develop these huge uh, low pressure systems in such a short time span i would personally be surprised uh, so that's one thing to note and at the same time the gfs has been known to uh, underestimate the ridging and both the gfs and uk met office model were suggesting i mean just a few days ago that the cold spell would end basically on saturday and sunday uh, which is not actually the case and the ridge has been stronger G gfs has kind of failed in that regard so that's one thing to consider i'm personally leaning towards a snowy outcome somewhere across the uk around the 9th and the 10th of january um, but yeah that's my opinion and i'll update you guys as more info becomes available so thank you very much for watching and have a good day bye bye